They were found dead, burned, mutilated, and dismembered, and buried like animals. First up at 8 o'clock, the former Valley mom convicted of murdering her two children and conspiring to kill her husband's ex-wife will spend the rest of her life behind bars. Lori Vallow was sentenced today in an Idaho courtroom, receiving a total of five life sentences plus 10 years. Her kids, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, went missing in 2019. Their bodies were found buried in her husband Chad Daybell's Idaho backyard in 2020. Vallow's attorney asked for lenience and a sentence of less than natural life. Vallow even addressing the court for the first time. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from medications happen. I know for a fact that my children are happy and busy in the spirit world. Outside the courthouse, JJ's grandparents, Kate and Larry Woodcock, said they feel like justice was served. Chad Daybell is expected to stand trial sometime next year. He faces the death penalty. A lot happened in court today. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney has been analyzing what Lori Vallow said and how her statements may have impacted the judge's decision on this. Yeah, both of them. So I was kind of looking at the sound that came down today, and, and this is what we were looking at. It, there was a lot that Lori Vallow had to say. Um, we want to break it down, the most important parts that stuck out from a true crime analysis perspective. Take a listen to this. Kylie has visited me. She is happy and very busy. Tylee is free now from all the pains of her life. The first time JJ visited me after he passed away, he put his arm around me and he said to me, you didn't do anything wrong, mom. I love you. And I know you loved me every minute of my life. My wonderful friend, Tammy Daybell, rests safely this day in the arms of Jesus. And I look forward to the day when we are all reunited and I, too, will rest with them in the arms of my Jesus. So clearly there, I, I, it was shocking that Lori Vallow even spoke. spoke at all. It's not something we always see with defendants. We did most recently see it in the Canal Murders trial with Brian Patrick Miller. But clearly she was under a delusional reality right there mm -hmm. that this was better yeah. for the kids the trying kids to convince the court off, that exactly. yes exactly and so i don't think that the judge looked at that and thought yeah that's definitely right in fact i think it went the opposite yeah. this was lori vallow's time to shine in terms of fighting for her leniency, fighting for any sort of lesser time in prison. We knew life in prison was going to be that maximum sentence. Interestingly enough, the judge talked about how she had no criminal history before this. So she went zero to 100 mm -hmm. from nothing at all to some of the most heinous crimes. The judge clearly seemed affected. And I want to play some sound bites that are kind of telling as to what stuck out to him the most when Lori was talking today. I don't think to this day you have any remorse for the effort and heartache you caused for others. You haven't shown any remorse for any of those actions. And she ended up being murdered and you simply have no remorse for it. Even sitting here today, there's no remorse for what you did. After all of this evidence through trial, you haven't shown any remorse. You haven't said you're sorry. So how important does remorse uh, play a factor in this case? Clearly, you just heard the judge say it about seven times. And when I heard him say that first today, as we were watching this all unfold live, I said to myself, that's going to play a key factor right there. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because when you have this allocution part of a trial, it's in this penalty phase, all that's left is the sentencing. The defendant has one chance to talk to the judge and say, here is why you should be lenient with my sentence. And she even had that opportunity of the fact that she didn't have a criminal history. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're dealing with horrendous, horrendous crimes here. But the judge said he took that into account, but never heard her ever say, 
I'm sorry at all. And, and that clearly affected the judge. He talked about it multiple times. Yeah, and playing it out, though, so she got five life sentences plus right. some extra time. If she had come across as remorseful, was, she, was, was uh, parole even a potential possibility for her? Not for some of those charges, no, but they could have done something a little bit different. I mean, th there could have been a lesser time in prison. It could have been 50 years. It could have been 70 years. And I mean, of course, not that that mm. matters when you're talking about the fact she's going to serve five consecutive mm. times. I mean, she's not getting out right. of prison unless there's some bizarre appeal that goes on here. But I think the judge made it very clear that what she said today in the courtroom in no way helped her case. And that was the one time she had to do that. Right. So it was just kind of interesting. And, and when Lori took, or I guess not took the stand, but she addressed the court, um, we know what happened here, right? We have all sat through and we've listened to the evidence. Lori Vallow herself has listened to the evidence in the courtroom. She knows exactly what was said. She knows exactly what was done. And yet I want to play the part where she talks about why everybody in this case, JJ, Tylee, uh, Tammy, why they died. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. Jesus Christ knows the truth of what happened here. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accident. So passing the blame around a little bit. No one was murdered. I mean, hello, we just had a, a full murder trial and you were convicted for mm -hmm. murder. So she's talking about things that really weren't even at play here. It kind of feeds into that delusional reality. And the judge talked about it, too, that she is still clearly in the, uh, quote, rabbit hole of this bizarre religion that she so right. took on, that clearly she had a radical change in her life. So she's going to be brought back now to Arizona for another case, which is sort of a, a thought exercise because she's already going to be spending the rest of her mm -hmm. life in prison mm -hmm. in Idaho. But it's important for justice and, I, you know, for the families and for victims out there. So what's, about, what's this Arizona case? Yeah, so, I mean, there's so many people that either were... Mm -hmm. Uh, attempted to be killed in this case or were killed. So when she comes back here, she's looking at two different charges for conspiracy of murder for her ex-husband, Charles Vallow, and then her niece's ex-husband, Brandon Boudreaux. You can see their pictures right there. Now, interestingly enough, what separates these two cases is Charles Vallow did die, but Brandon Boudreaux survived. So we'll see how that breaks down here uh, in an Arizona courtroom. The Maricopa County attorney, um, a, a, a current attorney said that we expect her to be extradited here by the end of the year. So we're oh, looking at sometime hell. probably this fall or early winter mm -hmm. as to facing these charges. But it'll be interesting to see how that kind of breaks down. And then, I mean, Derek, to your point, she's already under all these life mm -hmm. sentences. But often you see when there's uh, different charges in different states, the states still want to have their time in court. Yeah. So this was Idaho. Right. Now we're coming back to Arizona. Arizona. And the victims, just to have that confirmation, she did it or she did not do it. Exactly, exactly. And there's people here in Arizona that still want to see that justice served yeah. too. So yeah, we'll be obviously staying on top of yeah. that, but it was interesting to watch this all play out. It's not something we always see. It'll be interesting to see what Brandon Boudreaux has to say. That'll Agreed. be one we will all be watching. Absolutely. Brandon, thank you. Yeah.